Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Tonight we're on the coin door of the Vendo 39. Uh, we're gonna show how to get that glassy look, how to take that surface down. This has got a base coat, clear coat surface on it. And uh, tonight we're gonna do a, a little bit of a sanding. Hang on, I'm gonna grab a few things and I'll be right back. All right, we'll get started here. Um, if you're getting ready to do a buff on, on any of your paint, make sure it's fully, fully finished out, dried out. Using, um, I'm using 2000 grit. Depends on your, really your surface. If you need to go a little rougher, you can. But I'll take uh, wet and dry paper, 2000 grit, little foam pad that works really great. I, I love using these. It keeps you from rubbing your fingertips down into the clear coat. You wrap your paper around this. Uh, if you're looking for any, any of these, I think a good number, and I just saw this on the pad, 770-3537. That is a ball camp number uh, with Napa Auto Parts. That is a, one of their ball camp numbers. It's just a little foam pad. I think there comes three in a box. Not very expensive, but uh, as you see, you can wrap it around your paper. I always get a little bit of water, and I wet sand all these finishes. If the finish is pretty good, not too much orange peel, uh, put you a little bit of water down. Regular water, nothing special, just for a lubricant. Keep your uh, paper wrapped around this little pad. And uh, if you got any edges, stay off the edges. Any corners, we'll probably just do the face of this. Won't worry about buffing anything uh, on the edges. So we're gonna stay on the face of it here, but try to do short, short strokes. Stay off of the edges. If you get some of these edges here, which is fine, you can touch those back up. Obviously, there's a chrome piece that covers that. After you've done enough of these, you'll know, okay, that's probably far enough. And I'll do two different directions on this. And then finish it, usually the long direction. So you're kind of cross sanding it. And you'll tell once you uh, dry this off, if you're getting all your uh, little dust nibs taken off, if you're trying to get some orange peel off, you'll see in the, in the earlier videos where we did the main case, I do a lot of, a lot of buffing probably more than I need to, but I, I just really like that really glassed look. So we're gonna wipe this off, kind of see where we're at. That's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I'll get you a close up shot here. So you can see the face of it, a little bit dulled off. Maybe some slight, a little bit of slight orange peel in some areas, but not too bad. Once we buff it, we'll be able to tell uh, how good we've really got it. I'll be using the Vengeance uh, number three heavy cut. I uh, think it'll take out, uh, yeah, quickly removes 1200. I was using 2000, so it should go pretty quickly. I use the green pad which is a compounding pad. I've been using Vengeance since, since they've opened and just love the product. It works really good, it's pretty quick. We'll uh, do a little quick little demo here. I like putting the compound on the machine. Some people like putting it on the pad. I can go either way, but to save us a little time here, I'll... Uh, Put a little bit here, but we'll uh, 
see how it looks for them. This number three has a little bit of grit to it, not too much, nothing aggressive. Uh, you just got to pay attention, keep your pad, your buffer going, uh, keep a slight pressure on it, nothing, nothing crazy. Let the machine do its work. Don't need to do a robotics action, just, just real smooth and slow. Probably make one more pass. One more pass, and then we'll go to the next step. Really pretty good for the compounding stage right there. But uh, could you have done this by hand? Yes, you could have. Uh, could you have done it this quick? No, <laughs> you could not have. <laughs> If you did, uh, you would have been buffing, buffing like crazy to to get this. But hopefully, you're seeing this on there. We're gonna we're gonna go to uh, a little finish stage just to save us some time. But they do have three steps. Matter of fact, let me see if I've got my two here right now. I do have. Um, I've got two, and then I do have the one. So. We will we'll do all three steps. We'll use the the vengeance uh, blue pad, kind of a wool pad. Uh, our green pad that we had is uh, just a sponge pad, but this is kind of just a wool. You'll see the finish uh, start coming back really quick. I know there's some people try to skip, but try to do all your steps. The compounds gradually get finer and finer. But yeah, this is looking really good. This, um, this is an Infinity 2 in the Vengeance series. Great product. Not as much grit in the second series. All right, we're gonna do this in kind of slow. Oh yeah. It doesn't take much. Each step that you do it's gonna start bringing it, bringing it around. I may just flip this around. We'll finish this top while we're at it. All right, let's see what this looks like. That is getting there really good. I want to take a little bit of sandpaper and I'm going to give it one more face, face hit right here. When you do that, if you've been compounding, take and uh, clean that face back off because you'll have some polymers on there and uh, kind of clean them polymers off if you're going to re-sand. Looks really good. I just want to get a little bit better up here. And we're going to do one direction, uh, up and down. Stay off the edges. We're just going to stay on the flat face only. If you see a little bit of balling up coming on your paper, it's probably some of those polymers that got left on there. Uh, they will eventually come off. Sometimes sanding it one time like this and then come back in and wipe it down 
get it dried up really good and then come back in and hit it again and I'm going to give you one more stage that I do on the mostly everything I do I'll go down to 3000 grit they do make a 5000 I think it's a little overkill every step that you do in sandpaper is going to save you in buffing so if you stop at 1500 grit and you try to buff out 1500 grit it's just going to take you longer to buff those out. Typically, always take it down to at least 3,000. Uh, you can do that with either some paper or you can put it on a DA. 3M makes a, a part number, I believe it's a 02085. Um, goes on a hook it pad, on a DA pad, works really good. I may. I may do that here for a demo. We'll just see how this comes out here. If it's really nice, we'll probably leave it alone. But on a DA pad, they got 3,000 grit. They got 5,000 grit. I think somebody asked me how long did it take to buff out that the main case. Not, not the door, just the main case. I think I had three good evenings in it. Pretty well three good evenings. So at least buffing time probably probably six hours just on that case and some of it's just being too over picky but but each time you sand that make sure get that washed off really good you've got clear coat resins just sitting there make sure you wipe them off real good you don't want to buff that stuff back in and usually you can look across right now and see if you missed anything and it looks like we're Got one more little mark right there. I see I'm going to get and we'll be done. All right, so we're going to go back. Same procedure. We'll be using the number three Vengeance. Um, I talked to the owner at... Uh, at Vengeance told her I was going to be doing a buffing series on this tonight and uh, we will have a, a little link that you can click on she's going to offer a, a little promo price if you're interested in any compounds tonight I'm demoing basically the three the two and then I will be doing the last product that we'll put on tonight is the Vengeance uh, Liquid Shine. Great product. Uh, I've been using it for years. Very successful uh, with all of the Vengeance series. And uh, we're going to buff this one out. We are number the number three compound. They do also sell the pads that fit these buffers. Uh, I know there's a lot of people doing the dual action buffers. I'm still old school, still using the circular. Thank you. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> you know, probably could have stopped on that last one, but then you see what it looks like once you've just spent another maybe 10 minutes we spent there trying to rebuff but doing it off the machine like this is it's definitely the way to do it you're going to get that glass effect a little bit over the top there but we're going to hit we're going to hit it one more time with three. That's looking pretty good, pretty good. So what I might do, uh, let's go ahead and let's put a step two down. I'm gonna stay with my green pad and it's, it's wanting to slow the speed down a little bit. I get it. Uh, 
it does help in some areas. So we're gonna slow our speed down on this one. And sometimes I do that with my trigger, but I'll dial it in. If you've got one of these buffers, it's a, a DeWalt buffer. <clears throat> it's got a, a dial indicator on that. So we're gonna bump that down to the 18, like they're saying, and see how, how that, but I'm gonna still stay with my green pad though. See how, see what we, uh, how it feels here. that down and we're going to switch over to our red pad very very spongy pad i mean it's very soft and it's looking beautiful Woo! all right let's put that last coat on this thing <clears throat> it's a polymer base literally uh i went through cases and cases and cases of this stuff i've used so much of it i just love this product it's been a great final product i use it on my my vehicles i use it on my coke machines we will have a link at the end of the video all right that's pretty good coating right there just remember that liquid shine pot uh polish uh made by vengeance like i said we'll have a link on tonight's video where you can buy that direct from the factory for the sake of time i probably would give it one more hit but i'm going to just uh hand buff this off i want to give you a good view of it what it looks like you can see the shine difference hmm. we're at the last stages and as you can see lots and lots of buff time on that machine We just got our chrome in. I want to pack a little bit of the chrome here so we can take a look at it. I've had quite a few people ask me where do I have my chrome done at. I use Speed and Sport in Houston, Texas. Um, probably have for mid 90s, probably. Um, great group to work with, very professional. I've had extremely good luck with them. Quick turnaround times. If you get in a bind, they will get stuff out for you. But uh, we'll do a couple of uh, pieces here and let you look at what we've got, give you some close up. But uh, talk to Craig Bergman down there, he's the owner. Uh, he'll usually be at a lot of the shows. He does chrome for everything. I mean, from motorcycles, barber's chairs, I noticed here in one of the articles. But uh, Speed and Sport, Houston, Texas. We'll get a close up shot. This is the cover plate on that 81 over there, but wow. And they'll tell you, out of a uh, one out of 10, everything they try to get out of there is uh, over 9.0. If you get something that has a lot of pits in it, they will use a, an acid product to try to uh, bring that back around, but one of the emblem pieces here, we'll get the, these all laid out here first so and get an idea. I think I sent these in and had them back in, I think a couple weeks, pretty quick. I wish I could get these machines done that fast. 
but uh, you'll see the the cover face on there extremely good i mean very you just cannot beat the facing on that but man that that cover plate is just awesome um going on that 81 that is going to be a beautiful piece on there that is going to look nice very nice no bottle openers just amazing they didn't look that good definitely from the factory get this so everybody can see it as we're going through the steps of completing the vendo 39 door we'll get it from the side here make sure whatever you're putting it on there's nothing going to scratch your paint because we'll be upside down for just a little bit I don't know if everybody remember when we took this machine apart, we're going to clean the compound effects of this interior off before we go too much farther. If you order any chrome from Speed and Sport, hey, let them know you saw this in the video. I don't know if they'll cut you any deal or not, but just let them guys know that, hey, um, I'm promoting them. They didn't pay me to do this. They didn't give me anything free. I paid for everything, but I, I like those guys a lot down there. Uh, they take care of business. Uh, I've not had any issues with them in, in any of their work. So great company to work with. So if you happen to order anything, let them know that you saw the video and I told them to at least make a comment that you saw the uh, the chrome that uh, we did on this Vendo 39. I think we'll start tonight. A couple pieces here. Something simple. We'll put the bottle uh, opener in. I'd like to always, before we do the bottle opener, put the ring in first. The ring's fairly easy. I don't know if you remember, I always say to bend those little tabs straight so before you send it to the to the powder uh, powder coater to the chromer uh, make sure that ring has got all the the ears uh, folded up sometimes they get bent over and then they're hard to get out but but there's kind of a more of a dip and that is to accommodate for that to clear so when they stick the bottle in there you got a uh, the bottle can get past this a little easier. So make sure when you're at that point, I think you can still drop that in there. So, but it's easier to get these tabs kind of bent with that out of the way. So I'll show you a little trick I do on putting those in. If you got a pair of, uh, I use water pump flyers. I call them water pump flyers. They got kind of a wide mouth to them. Let me get just something to protect that edge. And sometimes you can do a little bit of a tape that way you're not scratching your brand new chrome up. Put your little edge on there, both sides. Something to kind of push against. And, I, and, I, and I'll probably still use a, a little bit of a towel edge. But that kind of keeps that edge protected. And... Uh, I always put one wrap or two on the mouth of my little water pump pliers that I use. And everybody might have a different way of doing it. Sometimes you can reach inside and bend them over. This I do a little bit of both. But <coughs> tape those up about like that. That way when you come in here, and if you don't have these taped up, at least get you a towel on there. We just want to get those tabs bent over all the way down, just like that. And just like, I can get a hold of it here. A little tough running a camera in this too, but we're getting there. So those are bent over on that side. Now we'll do the other. 
and just get that one edge on the outside edge of your chrome and let that push in on your tab just like that. And we're there. Now, if you grab this tab, uh, this little ring, and it wobbles on you, you need to tighten it up more because if that machine is turning off and on, off and on, you're gonna hear that little bit of vibration. It's gonna drive you nuts. All right, we'll go to the next step. Put the bottle opener in. We've got this really nice and tight. Drop that in. You'll use a, a regular taper. These are 1024s with the taper on it so they'll fit the slot nice. I get new ones. They'll go all the way through the panel into the other side. I'll get you more of a video here so you can see what's going on. Usually come from the underneath, get those pieces screwed together there. Kind of hold this up a little bit, put your fingers on the tops of these, and you'll see three screws underneath there, get them going. Obviously when they stamp this machine, I can tell you for sure that it did not have the, the bottle opener attached yet because they got it stamped right in the pattern where this bolts up at. January 1951. But right where the date is, the, there is a there's a 12th underneath there. I believe that was a 12th. Let me look before I finalize this. I want to make sure I remember that date. Yep, it is the 12th. So they stamped that. As you see, prop, they didn't paint it very good in the day. We gave it a little, a little more gloss. We will tighten those up just a little bit. We'll go to the cup next. I love putting the chrome stuff on. It's always a fun part. Now, make sure when you're getting ready to do this that you don't try to put the cup in. And I think the hose will line, yeah, the cup can be put in upside down. So make sure the chute is to the upside like that. Don't turn it upside down or you'll be pulling those rivets back out. I use the bolt-on rivet. I've done the other ones and I just like these a lot better. Uh, you get the you get a, a rivet head with a screw so you can just tighten it up. It works really good. They do make one like a regular rivet. You smack it. That is all good, but I've these are just so much easier. Now, when you get your chrome back, you will have to drill the holes out just a tad. You get all that chrome in there. It... Uh, some holes might accept it, but none of those holes are big enough. So we're going to get the drill out and we're going to drill it just a tiny, tiny bit. And we'll do these two just a little bit of an oversize, not much. You don't want to get it too big. That might be right where we need to be at. Um... I'd rather not give you a size in case the one you've got. So you need to do your own measuring because I don't want you to over drill these. Um, check your sizing with the rivets that you've got. 
Not sure where you're going to be getting your rivets, so. Let's see how that does. Perfect. We're going to drill these out right here. Be very careful. You may, uh, uh, to be on the safe side, uh, make sure you've got your, your glasses on. There's one. All right. Be very careful when you're doing these. You can jab yourself. All right, so same thing. Make sure you put it in the correct way. Scoop needs to be upwards. And if you want, we're going to, uh, we're gonna vacuum this off right quick. We'll get our Rivets set up here. Get this around here where you can see something. Probably one of the tougher screws to get in there because the where they've got it located at. You got some little bitty fingers. This is a be a great place to to use it. Use your fingers because. You got some big old fingers like mine. It's hard to get it started. Once you get it started, then it's tough to turn it. There we go. There's one in. On a Vendo 39, when you're buying these rivets, sometimes if you're look, thinking about your quantities that you need to be getting, you're going to have four here and you're going to have four up here. So you need eight per door. Don't hold me to it, but I think available at both, both suppliers, both Funtronics and Soda Jerk Works. All right, we're gonna tighten them up. Get you a little nut driver. That works the best to tighten them up. It's a really tight area and just snug them up don't don't do anything crazy you're not you're not going to tear those up very much we're on to the next piece uh we're going to turn this around so you can see it a little better um you have a lens assembly that goes in there that original one i i kept it but uh, you probably could buff those out, but no more than these little lenses are. Um, you'll just find that it's just as easy to to put the the lens, new lens in. You could probably make that one look just as good as that one. It was actually in pretty good shape. Um, there's... A little trick I do on these two. There's a little bit, you can probably see it in the video here, a little bit of an edge, as you see in that little lip edge right there. That little lip edge needs to fit in this groove. I have seen machines where this thing is cocked. Not, It's not even in there. It was cocked over, you know, not even in the slot. So make sure kind of snaps in but it can get loose and you can tell you can't move it once you get it in there really good probably the trick that most people have have the issues with is when you're getting ready to mount it on there there's where it kind of it wants to kind of come loose on you take you a little bit of tape something that doesn't show up Show you how to take this kind of hold it in because it will 
try to slip away on you, but I don't like putting something over it that's going to cause you trouble because you're not going to be able to once you rivet it down you're not getting back in there but if you can get at least one little edge taped in and we're going to see if that yellow you cannot see that yellow any way you look there and as you see it's going to stay in there it's not i only got it taped in two spots right there and there you're going to put this down right on there and same thing you're gonna you're gonna feel it that lens pop into that slot it's there right now all right we're gonna grab four more rivets i always say to do the top one first and i'm gonna stick to that because the bottom ones are a lot easier top ones are the tough ones we're gonna give that just a little tap not much There it goes. If you're having to tap them in like that, it's fairly, fairly tight. Like that in there. Just a little bit of a tap. Just like that. It's in. And we won't tighten them all the way down, but I'd like to get the, the nut piece on there. All right, we're going to try to feed these other ones up. Looking at it. Feed them through the bottom here. That's the way they're supposed to go in. So take your time, get your, uh, get it reamed out just right. We've got them tightened down. I always like to see the, sometimes you get them too tight, but you know, if you want to grab it, it shouldn't move around. That lens shouldn't be moving around. So everything you feel there, nothing should be flopping and giving any trouble. All right. Check a couple of these other screws here. I thought I had them pretty tight. Yeah, they're just done. Okay. So everything should feel pretty good. One right there that's not feeling right. There we go. Okay, we're going to put the lock assembly in the Vendo 39 door. The, re the locking rail. Make sure... Make sure you'll see that V cut. That flat side needs to go towards the the outside of the door. Uh, can you put it in upside down? Not really. Uh, it's only one way it'll go in. Uh, make sure that V rail is up against there. Now, one thing I always like to do, stick that in there uh, uh, just in case. You're gonna run that lock assembly in and put your lock nut down. I've already done that. It's not that big a deal. This piece here, uh, the critical error is it's not gonna go in like this. Not gonna happen. It's gotta go in like that. So I always like putting it in and checking because sometimes you get a little bit of clear coat in there. You need to make sure that is moving nice and easily. Use the... Uh, Use some kind of lubricant. I'm using the, the fluid film. I think you saw that probably on some other stuff that I've done. But uh, great product. Gives a little bit of rust per, 
and corrosion protection, but it is a lubricant. It's got a lanolin in it. Uh, I give that always a hit right in these two areas, and it don't take much, just a bump. It's a little bit of a of a of a grease that does not get sets up and gets hard. Then put that in and work that in there a little bit, nice and smooth. Nothing worse than have a lock that sticks on you and it's hard to turn. This is the area where it's going to be the hard to turn. So the next thing <clears throat> you want to do, and I'm just going to stick a, a, a regular pin in there for now so we can kind of just show an assembly and not run too long on the video uh, on this, but uh, we'll just get it kind of popped in there. Next thing I like to do whenever you're uh, putting the key in, I like to have the key in there on the side, and I'll show it to you here. Whenever you set it up, I like to have that key go in and it sets in there correctly. So when I say correctly, I'm talking the key needs to go in like that. Not upside down, straight up and down. Now, if you got a double-sided key, that's great. That's the original key. Set it up the way you want to set it up. But on these here, get that key set to that position. Hold your finger in that position right there. Lay it back down. The next piece that's got to go on, and this is a stop ring. So when that tit that comes up and it hits on a little bit of a notch there, it keeps it from turning, just keep turning and turning. So if you ever get one and somebody hasn't locked it down or left this out, the key will just keep turning, turning, and turning. It'll just keep going around and around. So make sure this pin, and I like to put that, our key is still locked. As you see, it's straight across right now. I like to put this on the downside. And I'll show it to you a little better here once I get it popped in. The stop is to the top up here. And then you'll see the little corners that come around and it stops. The next piece that's got to go on is the cam. And this can go on either way. It's not going to matter. Put on this way or that way. It's, it's going to be the same. There's not a front and the back. But you can put it on like that. Or you can put it on like that. I like having the cam towards the uh, to the edge of the door, so it needs to be standing up. You can do it this way, but it uh, tends to rub on the the backing rail. So you want to do it on this direction here. So hold your finger on the back side there, or you will push that loose. Hopefully you can see this. It might be a little tough with. Get that on there just like that. It'll fit in between those two bars. Get your, your screw put in there. Keep your finger on that back side. Do not let it push back. If you let it push back, you're going to be doing this all over again. Tighten it up. And you just need to get it snug and see if it's right or not. Now, if you've never done a machine before, this rail right here you'll see the pitch of it when that goes up into the housing that is actually locking into let me show you how that looks on if i've got my uh, pieces here so it's going to look similar to this this is going to be mounted to the door basically like this and when that lock comes up it's going to go in there something like that. So when that comes up, it'll swoop. And we're only talking a half turn. We're not going very far. We're just wanting to get it locked in there so it actually grabs that little tab. That's kind of the way it looks. So I'll get it down here a little bit lower so you can see it again. Your tab will be probably in there like this. And then whenever it slides in, it'll be in a position like that. So you cannot get the door open. That's, that is actually the, the lock mechanism. So if you're looking at your key, I like to have it just like that. And if you look on the inside, 
you turn it to the right, like you're trying to open the machine, that should come down. And it only comes down about that far. That's all it takes. Quarter of a turn, not even a half turn. I think I said half earlier. It's just a quarter of a turn. And then to lock it back in, you come back and it goes back up. Your key should come out. If you turn it to that quarter turn, the, the quarter turn, you'll see that there's, there's a, a, a stop right here and there's a stop right there. So you can see two stops in that setup. So quarter of a turn should be loose. Quarter turn should be loose. Let's see how that works. Uh, other than that, we got one more piece to put on there. And it's just a little, the guide, there's a little guide piece in here. The guide piece will go up into this housing right like this. You'll slip it in. It'll slip in the top and then the bottom. And so it's got a little spring that goes on here. And there's a screw that holds that on. That screw, and we'll clean, we're going to clean this one up, but that goes right into this little housing. Now, critical thing about that screw, it's, it doesn't go in very far. And whatever you do, don't try to put the wrong screw in there or you're gonna put a dent in the top of your coin mech. Actually, coin cover, your coin cover, not the mech. So let me uh, show you how that spring is gonna go on just like this. Put your screw in. And get it tightened up here it's gonna look like that it's it's designed to give it a little bit of a hit on the inside door you're gonna have an adjustment that's gonna look just like this and that helps guide that coin to the coin mech so if it's got a little bit off you've got an adjustment that you can make and I'll show you where that goes on this machine. So coin door is going to go on. Your adjustment pin is that hole right there. And you'll see that piece in there. So if you're seeing that, wondering where does that thing go? That's where that goes. It's adjustment. So it'll hit that coin mech just right. Isn't that going to be looking good? Man, looks really good. All right. Well, coin door is pretty well done uh we just got a few things we need to change we will uh at the end we'll work on all the decaling but i like to get everything on there get everything set up i'll probably even give it a little bit one kind of a final polish with the last buffer just in certain areas but uh basically the coin door is put together uh, the decals got left. Uh, we, we talked about the lock assembly, how that works when we get ready to bolt this up. Uh, my next thing, and I had to wait, uh, I had a broken spring on the coin mech when I took it apart in the crank assembly area. This is a critical spring, should not be in two pieces. But uh, we're waiting on that part to come in. As soon as we get the coin mech uh, installed, uh, we're going to be really close to uh, turning this thing on and uh, finalizing the assembly on this machine. But thanks for watching. Hey, thank you for all the subscribers. Uh, I'm just in shock how many people are, are watching right now. And thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to keep them going. Thanks a lot. And we'll catch you on the next segment.